If we want to combat sexism, we need to start with this absurd notion of what it means to be manly or womanly. Look, if being a man is defined by fixing carburetors and salivating over power tools, I'm a lesbian. And the state of Georgia recognized my gay marriage years ago. And as bad as it is to try to define proper gender roles by your own narrow-minded preconceptions, the people that really piss me off are the assholes that do that, and then get angry at other people for not comporting to their pigeonholes. I've got three examples of that particular breed of misogyny for you this week, including women trying too hard to be manly, women not trying hard enough to be manly, and women trying too hard to keep men from being manly enough. We'll take those in order. And no surprise, we'll find our first nugget of sexism on Fox News. During an episode of Fox and Friends, former Navy SEAL Carl Higby was invited on to talk about why soldiers need penises. During the interview, he explained that women in combat would add an unnecessary variable and that, quote, nothing against women, but I don't think they have a place, end quote. Now, one way or the other, that's offensive, but more so, I think, since he was talking to a female combat veteran. She pointed out that his excuse for wanting to keep women out of combat essentially boiled down to, we always done it this way, and when the argument was laid bare like that, he still didn't seem to see what was wrong with it. He repeatedly talked about the dangers of reducing physical requirements to allow women to serve without ever conceding that nobody is suggesting that. When he was eventually forced to admit that some women can and have passed all the physical requirements for combat duty, the closest he came to a concession was, quote, just because some women somewhere probably could doesn't mean they should, end quote. And if that story left you feeling worn down a bit, don't worry. We won't have to travel far to find our next story this week, as it was also on Fox News. Sudden this week in misogyny, regular Andrea Tantoros took to the airwaves on an episode of Snooty Bitch Tonight, or whatever her show was called, to decry the sexism of pretending that women can get raped when they're drunk. So let me walk you through her thought process. But hold on tight, because if you get lost in here, there's no coming back. So her claim is that any special role that tries to protect women from being raped when they're intoxicated is bigoted because it assumes that women can't man up and handle their liquor. Apparently, she thinks that since men can drink a lot and not get ass raped when they pass out, women should be able to do the same. That's her idea of equality. And for our final story, we'll go to one of the few places you're more likely to find sexism than Fox News, the far side of the pulpit. This one comes to us from the floppiest part of America's penis, Florida, where Pastor Bill Lytell spent a recent sermon lamenting the fact that in today's America, men can't even publicly rejoice over their divinely ordained subjugation of women. This story starts, fucked up enough, when a nine-year-old member of his congregation went to the bathroom and found a loaded handgun sitting there. Well, this made the local news, and when the local news was at his church filming, a few of the viewers noticed a sign up at the church that read, Male Leadership. This apparently caused a ruckus once people were done freaking out about the gun dispensary and the commode. Responding to the community's criticism of the sign and the implicit refusal to put women in leadership roles within the church, Lytell doubled down on his chauvinism by pointing out that the Bible is very clear about the inferiority of women, adding, quote, This is a man's world. There aren't many places where men can even rejoice anymore without feeling about half shamed. You can say what you want, but God made Adam in leadership, and it's going to end with a man in leadership. It's just God's way, end quote. Well, I'm already running long here, so I'm not going to give Pastor Lytell the profanity-laden response he deserves, but I will say that he should really be about twice as ashamed of himself as he is. And with that, I'll hand things back over to Noah and Heath.